We've talked a lot about CPUs recently, and we've mentioned such powerhouse processors as the Intel Core i9 and the Ryzen Threadripper. We've even done a video on dual CPU motherboards. But despite this, there's still one computing powerhouse that we haven't mentioned, the Intel Xeon CPUs. Now, these CPUs aren't even marketed to consumers, they're marketed to businesses. But chances are you've heard of them and were left speechless when you looked up their specs. And whenever this happens, most of us can't help but think, is a Xeon CPU viable for gaming? How much better would your games run if you had one of these babies? If this is you, then don't worry. Gaming Scan has you covered because that's precisely what we'll be talking about in this video. We'll start from the beginning. Xeon CPUs were first released by Intel in 1999. They were high-end processors designed specifically for servers and workstations because they offered many new features that the Core series just didn't have. The eye-catcher here has always been their impressive core count, with some of the high-end models currently sporting as many as 28 cores and 56 threads. Additionally, these CPUs have more cache memory. This will also vary from series to series, but the numbers go from 4 to 60 megabytes. Of course, we should mention that the Xeon CPUs do also come with more modest specifications. Some are even hyper-threaded dual and quad cores, so this is why we're considering them for gaming. If you've binged through a couple of our videos, then you may already be tired of this question. But we simply have to repeat ourselves for those who haven't watched our other CPU videos. We'll try to be brief, however. Essentially, the bottom line is this. The CPU is not the most important component for gaming. That would be the GPU. But the two are connected. You see, the CPU acts kind of like the GPU's manager, telling it what to render and when. The graphics card is the one doing all the heavy lifting, but the processor dictates the pace it'll be working at. So if the CPU can't keep up, then a part of your GPU will be doing absolutely nothing. The process we've just described is what's known as bottlenecking. Naturally, you want to make sure that you buy a CPU that will be able to get the most out of your GPU so that you can prevent this. But do you need a Xeon for that? The answer is absolutely not. Even the Intel Core i5 will just barely bottleneck the most powerful consumer graphics card currently available. This being the GTX 1080 Ti. The only reason you might need more CPU power is if you're using several high-end cards in SLI. But even then, there are better options than the Xeon. So in case this wasn't abundantly clear enough, let's reiterate. No, a Xeon CPU is just not worth it for gaming. These are extremely powerful CPUs and you can only get the most out of them if in a workstation or a server. Gaming PCs just don't need the extra computing power and multitasking capabilities. And we didn't even mention the price of these processors. Most Xeon models cost over $1000. But just for the sake of argument, let's say you find a decently priced lower end model. You still shouldn't buy it because Xeon CPUs have their own sockets and architecture which not only makes them incompatible with most mainstream motherboards but could actually lead to worse in-game performance. The only viable way we see a Xeon being used for gaming is if you brought it for a workstation but you also game on the same computer. But this is just a technicality. If you don't need these processors for a workstation, then you really are much better off just buying a consumer CPU. And there you have it, Intel Xeon for gaming. If you're one of the few people that have tried gaming on a Xeon CPU, then make sure to leave a comment and tell us exactly what the experience was like. We'd love to hear it. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.